Sage mode is one of the most talked about things in the entirety of Naruto lore, and it makes sense because inherently it's a very interesting power up. And while we do know a good amount about Sage mode, like how you acquire it and who you acquire it from and what powers it gives you, we don't know as much as we should. You see, I've done entire videos explaining what Sage Mode is, but today's video isn't about explaining Sage Mode. Today's video is extrapolating or maybe even theorizing about the possibility of other kinds of Sage Modes. You see, we know enough about Sage Mode to look at somebody and say, that person has Sage-like abilities. And yet that person never trained in Ryuji Cave or Mount Mubuko, and they don't have Snake or frog-like appearance. So when we look at somebody who seems as though they have sage mode, or at least should have sage mode, and yet they didn't train with the toads or the snakes, it leads us to believe there might be a different way to get it. And believe it or not, there's evidence for this. But before I get to pulling the receipts on Naruto lore, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you don't want me to pull your receipts, guys, go ahead and follow my other two YouTube pages, NC Gamer 23 where I play video games like Subnautica and It Takes Two, or Hammer's Collection, where I unbox massive statues like that one behind me that companies send me. Also, guys, a small bit of news about this page right here, NC Hammer 23 you're gonna be seeing a little bit of a change unfortunately i got greedy you see for the entirety of my content creation career naruto has done numbers and therefore i have been the naruto guy and while i love talking about naruto it has an incredibly expansive lore that people don't know a whole lot about there's more to me than this so from now on instead of posting about naruto three times a week like i do right now i'm actually only gonna be posting about naruto twice a week and my third video will be about jjk or aot or mha or hunter hunter or chainsaw man what's ever new and interesting to me will this hurt my growth absolutely but will it be better for my mental health also absolutely so if you're seeing this right now and you like other anime i just want you to know so do i so please watch those videos or send them to your friends that like other anime okay enough about that on to the video so obviously when you talk about sages that didn't have any relation to the toads or the snakes the first person that pops up in everyone's mind is hashirama and while he is an incredible jumping point he's actually not who the basis of this video is about you see there's people outside of hashirama who not only show sage-like abilities but also sage-like appearances you see the crux of today's video is actually talking about the hoshigaki clan aka the clan that kisame belongs to we'll also be talking about jugo's clan whose name we don't know and obviously Hashirama. You see, Hashirama is the jumping point for this conversation because Hashirama has a sage mode, but he never trained in Mount Mubuko or in Ryuchi K. He just had a sage mode, at least as far as we know. I've made entire videos about what possible sage Hashirama would be that you can find right there, but basically I'll break down that video for you right now quickly. Essentially, people believe Hashirama could fall into three camps of sage mode. The first camp believed that he was a tree sage, and obviously there's no ents in Naruto, so he wasn't taught by the trees, but he learned from from the trees basically because hashirama could use wood release people believe because he was growing trees with his own chakra he became naturally attuned to nature energy and this makes sense if you think about it because technically wood release is the only release that creates a living thing like you could say that earth releases or mud walls create natural things but those natural things aren't alive the trees that hashirama make are alive and because hashirama was making actual living things with his chakra things that would then admit nature chakra he figured out how to tap into said nature chakra the rational argument against that camp is okay then why isn't yamato a sage yamato has hashirama cells he can use wood release therefore he should also get sage mode from this tap into the natural energy but yamato can't do things like deep forced emergence or anything like that yamato can basically just shoot out two by fours out of his hands and we've never technically seen the wood yamato use sprout so the rational counter argument to the rational argument is that the wood that yamato creates isn't alive anymore actually this counter argument makes a lot of sense when you look at how madara was able to use hashirama's wood release at its full power and he got sage mode because of it even stating that figuring out sage mode was simple after using the wood release which would point us in the direction that after using this wood release madara was able to easily understand how to tap into the nature chakra he was creating the second camp is significantly stupider second camp states that hashirama was a beaver sage because wood i wish i was making this up but the third camp is the one that i subscribe to you see i've been vocal on the things i like from kishimoto and the things that i don't like from kishimoto and this is one of the things i don't like so we know that all throughout naruto there's three big summons right there's the toads there's the slugs and there's the snakes it has been that way since hagoromo who learned sage mode from the great toad sage 
2,000 years ago. So why is there three great summons and only two of them have a sage mode? Well, probably because the slugs went to the girls. Well, Tsunade and Sakura had a standing relationship with Lady Katsuyo and the slugs. And the slugs have an area like Ryuchi Cave or Mount Mobuku. They live in Shukatsu Forest. And this is where Lady Katsuyo, the queen of all slugs, lives. So the theory that I subscribe to is that Hashirama himself was a slug sage. And this theory has a lot of points going for it. The first of which is the design of his sage mode. You see, Hashirama gets huge painted lines on his face when he goes into sage mode. And this is nothing like we've seen with either perfect toad sages or perfect snake sages. Because we know with a perfect sage mode transformation, all that changes is your eyes. But even with the small change of just your eyes changing, it does show a small amount of resemblance to whatever you learned it from. Naruto and Minato get the orange circles right here that looks like the toads. And Mitsuki, who's the closest thing we've ever had to a perfect snake sage, gets a kind of mask of green that looks a lot like the snakes that he learned it from. His skin also becomes crackly like scales. Neither of these things look like what Hashirama has. What Hashirama has does look a lot like Lady Katsuyo's markings. You see, Lady Katsuyo has long blue lines flowing down the side of her body. Long blue lines that are eerily reminiscent of the long lines drawn out for Hashirama's eyes. But there's more points than just cosmetics. There's also Hashirama's healing factor. See, Hashirama had an inherent healing factor that was insane. It said that his healing factor was on par with the strength of a hundred seals ability to heal, meaning this man could regenerate limbs as long as he had enough chakra. This is why Madara was able to survive Night Guy's kick. It was because of Hashirama's healing factor that he got from having Hashirama's cells on him. You know who else can heal people? People from the brink of death very effectively and quickly as long as she has enough chakra? Lady Katsuyo. And then of course, let's remember where the slugs are from. Shukatsu Forest. Snake sages use abilities like stretchy arms and long necks to attack people because it emulates snakes. Dryah uses oil bomb attacks and things reminiscent of toads. And by snake sages and toad sages using the techniques that are inspired by the people that they learned sage mode from, they're also being inspired by the places that those things that they learned from are from. In a less complicated manner of saying, essentially, toad sages and snake sages are inspired by the locations that toads and snakes exist in. Snake sages moves are inherently influenced by Ryuchi Cave, and it's the same with toad sages. So wouldn't it make at least a little bit of sense to you that the wood user was taught by the people in the forest? Because mind you, Shikatsu Forest is not just a forest. It is a legendary forest with massive slugs that are tapped in to nature energy, just like the toads or the snakes. But they're also not offensively focused animals. Lady Katsuyu, while she is able to spew acid, she is more focused on healing. So while training from the slugs to acquire the healing factor, he also tapped into the nature energy of the area and learned from the trees. This tracks even further when you consider the fact that the strength of a hundred seal is largely connected to Lady Katsuyo because you have to use the strength of a hundred seal to have even close to enough chakra to summon Lady Katsuyo anywhere. Sakura and Tsunade together could only summon 70% of her. And when Hashirama enters into sage mode, he gets a marking on his forehead. Now, does this marking look like the strength of 100 seal we see on Tsunade and Sakura? No. Tsunade and Sakura's is a diamond, while Hashirama's is a dot in a circle. But we've also never canonically seen a man with the strength of 100 seal. So it could manifest differently, or his could represent a stronger version of the strength of 100 seal. But the problem with this theory is if Hashirama was a slug sage, why aren't Tsunade and Sakura? And the thing is, they actually might be. See, this is kind of the crux of today's video. To explain that sage mode might might actually look different depending on who or where you learned it from. See, because sage mode from the toads or the snakes is so offensive, it's gonna make you fight differently. You can use Froggy Kumite to predict where somebody's gonna be and swing your fist to there. You can use Snake Sage Mode to apparently fly, but Slug Sage Mode is different. What if Slug Sage Mode is just the strength of a hundred seal? See, the true power of the slugs is A, their immense size, B, their immense amount of chakra, and C, the immense amount of healing factor they have. You see, humans will never be able to achieve the size of Lady Katsuyo. It's just impossible. But that doesn't mean they can't achieve her massive reserves of chakra and her healing factor. 
And I know this sounds insane because where was the arc where Tsunade or Sakura went to go train with the slugs? It never happened. And it never happened because Kishimoto only knows how to write one type of woman and that's strong punchy healer. So consider what I'm doing right now a sort of rewrite. But essentially let's say Hashirama was a slug sage like my theory states. The problem then becomes who taught Tsunade the strength of a hundred seal. Now there's two theories about this. One is that it was Hashirama and the other is that it was Mito Uzumaki. You see because Mito Uzumaki also had a mark on her head and it was a diamond it was just a different color from Tsunade and Sakura's. So as to who Tsunade learned the strength of a hundred seal from, we don't necessarily know, but my theory states that it was both of them. You see, Mito Uzumaki, just like Hashirama, had a massive life force and therefore a large healing factor. But that wasn't because she trained with anybody, she was just a full-blooded Uzumaki. But she still is technically the only Uzumaki we've ever seen with this diamond on her forehead. Karin didn't have it, Kushina didn't have it, Ashina didn't have it, Naruto didn't have it. Hell, not even Nagato had it. So why does only Mito Uzumaki have this diamond? Well, it could be something uninteresting like it was an aesthetic choice of hers but i find it much more interesting to think about the possibility that maybe mito trained with the slugs or hashirama taught her what he had been taught see we've never really seen what hashirama and mito meet we've seen their marriage but that's basically it so to assume that mito before their marriage was sent off to the slugs to train with them or before that hashirama taught her what he had been taught is not insane especially when you consider the chakra requirements to summon lady katsuya like i said earlier tsunade and sakura combined were only able to summon seven 70% of Lady Katsuya. So wouldn't it stand to reason that the people with a standing relationship to the slugs should be the people with enough chakra to be able to summon her? And a full-blooded Uzumaki with the strongest tailed beast inside of her would have enough chakra to summon her. That is for sure. But even if you want to say that Mito Uzumaki isn't a slug sage, and I understand that, it's kind of a stretch, this marking could be a rudimentary version of the strength of a hundred seal, which would explain the difference in color and why we've never seen her activated. It's a possibility she had so much chakra as the Nine Tails Jinchuriki and a full-blooded Uzumaki that she had to find somewhere else to store it. And the reason that Kushina never ran into this issue is because she didn't live long enough for it to become an issue. So the reason that Tsunade's diamond is different from Mito's is because she got a combination of knowledge from Mito and Hashirama. She got the chakra storage from Mito and the healing factor from Hashirama. And that's how you get strength of 100. Now, would this fall in under Slug Sage in a traditional sense? No, but that's kind of what we're talking about. You see, because just like all the other sages in this show, Tsunade and Sakura can take on slug-like appearance and slug-like abilities. When they activate their strength of 100 seal, they get long black lines down their faces, just like with Hashirama. And then they use the inherent healing factor gifted to them by the strength of 100 and use their healing prowess on others, just like Lady Katsuyo does. On top of this, just like all the other sages in the show, they have a standing relationship with the slugs and can summon them. Inherently, the only thing different about what Sakura and Tsunade does is the fact that Kishimoto just never gave them the sage title. And you'll be like, well, Nick, their eyes don't change. Mitsuki's eyes when he enters perfect snake sage mode don't change color either. It's just everything around his eyes changes. Hashirama's eye color doesn't change either. It's just everything around his eyes, just like with Sakura and Tsunade. But here's the thing, Sakura and Tsunade manifesting as a different kind of sage isn't even the only option. There's actually like a lot of other scenarios where stuff like this happens to a T. Look at the Hoshigaki clan. You see, the Hoshigaki clan, of which we only know two members, have gills. They can breathe underwater. They are quite literally fishmen. And some people thought that maybe Kisame was a test tube baby and that's why he was a shark. But then we met somebody else from the Hoshigaki clan and guess what? Still a shark. That person was Shizuma Hoshigaki, who is canon, by the way, because he appears in a Boruto light novel. The hidden mist arc in Boruto is based off of a light novel, so it's not even actually actually just anime canon, it's full canon. So now we are two for two for people that were born in drastically different generations, both having gills, and they're from the same clan. Having animalistic-esque appearance is inherently tapped into having a sage mode ability tied in with the animal you look like. Now you're saying, well, Nick, but they permanently look like sharks. Other sages only look like their animals while in sage mode, which is also not true. Kabuto, while technically a dragon sage, is in a permanent sage mode mode transformation. But how is he in a permanent, incomplete sage mode transformation? Well, that has to tie into Jugo's clan. You see, before the fourth great shinobi world's war, Kabuto kind of did a 
a big old mix em up of everything Orochimaru ever achieved and then drank it like a chug chug. By doing this, he assimilated the powers of Karin, aka massive chakra reserves and the ability to heal himself or anybody near him by basically just infusing his life force into them. All of the Keke Genkai of the Sound Village 4. And then most importantly, Jugo's clan ability to be constantly pulling in nature energy and Orochimaru's Snake Sage Mode. You see, to achieve Snake Sage Mode, you have to be bitten by the Great White Snake Sage. And when the Great White Snake Sage bites you, it injects nature energy into you. If you survive the nature energy injection, then the Great White Snake Sage takes you on as a student. If you don't survive that injection, it eats you. Snake Sages are a bit more metal than Toad Sages. Papato survived that bite, so he was brought on as a student under the Great White Snake Sage. But because he has Jugo's clan ability, he is always pulling in nature energy, which means as a sage, he is constantly in sage mode because remember the second that naruto pulls in sage mode chakra from anywhere or any of his shadow clones he enters sage mode because to do a quick 101 on how sage mode works you have to pull in nature chakra and mix it with your own chakra and that creates senjutsu chakra so the second any nature chakra enters your system if you do not mix it with your own chakra properly you will either die or become an imperfect sage like Jiraiya or like Kabuto in this sense. So there is a precedent for people being in an imperfect sage mode that makes them look like the animals they learned that sage mode from constantly. And it's all tied in to Jugo's clan. So two theories spin out about the Hoshigakis. One, as a clan, they have a similar ability to Jugo's clan. And two, they are all a product of an experimentation that took Jugo's clan's Keke Genkai and placed it in people with an affinity for shark sage mode. Regardless which theory you subscribe to though, both require you to believe that there are sharks out there somewhere that are teaching people shark sage mode. So whether or not they got the ability from Jugo's clan or they had it naturally, they are still always pulling in nature energy to keep an imperfect sage mode going constantly. And this is an insane because I'll remind you, Kisame was referred to as the tailless tailed beast, meaning he was hypothesized to have as much chakra as a tailed beast, which is almost endless. But why did he have so much chakra? The only people we've seen with almost endless chakra have been the Uzumakis, the Senju, or Jinchuriki, or those who can always replenish it, like Jugo. Now, Kisame doesn't come from the Uzumakis or the Senju. He wasn't a Jinchuriki, and he didn't come from Jugo's clan. As as far as we know. So to assume that this endless chakra reserve did come from his ability to naturally pull in nature energy at all times isn't crazy, especially when you consider the fact that Samehata liked Kisame's chakra. And Kisame itself is a living sword that showed preferences to specific kinds of chakra, like it really liked Killer B's Eight Tails chakra. So if Kisame was hypothetically feeding Samehata with a constant flow of nature energy, that would explain as to why Samehata preferred Kisame. Kisame also having a relationship with sharks would explain his summons. If you guys remember how Kisame died, he summoned sharks into a water bubble with him and had them eat him. Not chakra sharks, not water sharks, physical, real sharks. Just like how every other Sage Mode user summons the thing they learned Sage Mode from. It would also explain as to why he was able to bond with Samehata so easily. Something that Shizuma was also able to do. Ask yourself, why would two people from the same clan be so easily able to bind with Samehata and form a shark person? Well, probably because they had the blueprint already. Them binding with Samehata just allowed them to go further into their shark mode transformation. And the only reason we've never learned about the Hoshigakis and whether or not they're being trained by sharks is well because the show is based out of Konoha. We know a good amount about the Hidden Mist, but not nearly as much as we could if the show was based out of there. I mean, think about it. We have three Toad Sages in Konoha and we still know very little about Mount Muabuko. And we know even less about Ryuchi Cage. So to assume that two people from an outside village would get their own fleshed out backstory about how they got their Sage Mode, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that there's Sage Mode users out there in the Naruto? Naruto universe who just manifest differently from those who learn from Mount Muabuku or Ryuji Cave? Tell me below in the comments. And while you're there, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I'm not saying that Kiba's a dog sage, but does have fangs.